Okay, well, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I am going to continue on. Earlier, I talked about two-part tariff in a separate video, actually. Now I'm going to talk about bundling. So let's skip ahead. If we're thinking about bundling, we have in mind a situation where one price is offered for a collection of distinct goods. So typically, this might be like two goods that are sold for a single price. The example that a lot of people might have experiencing bundling might be getting your internet, your phone, your cable TV, all for one price. And uh, very often, like this is how people, even today, might still have a landline phone as if it came bundled with the other things you actually want. Other examples of bundling might be like right and left shoes, right? They're two different distinct products. Definitely they're used together. They're complements, right? In the truest sense for most people, but we typically don't buy independently, right? For instance, one price for the collection of Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, uh, Excel, and so on. Example of bundling with Windows and Internet Explorer. This is actually like the illegal form. This is the this was uh, tying, which has antitrust implications. And there's an interesting situation thinking about this uh, in terms of like the case that happened a couple decades ago. But that's an example where you'd you'd have like a single price for a couple of products sold together. What made tying illegal is that this is an idea where. Uh, this is an idea where the firm might have market power in one market and tries to leverage that market power to force the consumer to buy some other product. That's different than like right and left shoes. We don't typically think of like Nike or Adidas or Asics uh, or Hoka having market power on right shoes and exerting that market power in the market for left shoes. That's kind of weird. So uh, typically, if we're thinking about a situation where you're just selling two products for a single price, and they're things that, uh, and they're, you know, maybe they're compliments, maybe it's like, think of like fast food, uh, different types of value meals, like a number one, two or three that might have burger, fries, shake sold for a single price. That's another example of bundling. You're not typically thinking of a situation where one firm is, where the firm is trying to leverage market power from, uh, from like the burger market into the fries market, for instance. So in the situation where they would be, where you're trying to illegally leverage market power from one market to another, that'd be tying, and that's a different case. So that's actually more appropriate for the Windows and Internet Explorer example, and that's a separate discussion entirely. All right, so if you have a couple different products, you could use bundling, and the idea would be this is a way to be able to extract additional producer surplus, additional profits, and our firm faces a number of different options. They could choose to price separately, right? Just standard pricing. You have a couple different distinct products that consumers are interested in, which is sell each for their own price. Or you could bundle. You could sell the products together at a single price. Or you could do something in between. We'd call that a mixed bundle. So for instance, if you go to a fast food place, typically you'd have the ability to either buy the value meal or to be able to buy standalone items. And same thing with a lot of restaurants. You, maybe you, you'd get fries with a burger or you'd get eggs with pancakes or something like that, but you could also buy them as a side. That's another example of like mixed bundling. Okay, so here's an example. We've got two theaters with known reservation prices. That's what's gonna be in the table here. And the question is, should these movies be priced separately or bundled? And this is sort of invoking a historical example. My guess is as soon as I mention these films, you're gonna know one of them and have no idea the other one, right? So GWTW and GGG, GWTW, Gone with the wind. Gone with the wind. All right, so you probably heard of that one at least. I've never seen it, but I've heard of it. And um, I don't like, I don't watch movies. I find it to be just a colossal waste of time. Um, and then this one is Getting Gertie's Garter. And the historical example was the, the distribution house knew that people wanted to be able to screen Gone with the Wind and knew that people were way less interested in seeing Getting Gertie's Garter. So they had the option of requiring a movie house that would screen Gone with the Wind to also screen Getting Gertie's Garter or to sell it, I guess that'd be a little bit closer to tying, or they'd have the ability to, they just sell them at a single price or they give the ability to buy at a single, a single price and take advantage of the fact that the willingness to pay for Getting Gertie's Garter is not zero. And so if you sell at a price that, for if you sell a price, a single price for both products jointly, then maybe you'll be able to move more units or sell more than if you're selling individually. Okay, so that's the intuition at least. Let's make that way more formal. I'll do that in a second. The first thing is we have case one, we have case two, and one thing you recognize is we've got the same characters, theater A and theater B. We've got the same films above and below, and the willingness to pay for, get it, for Gone with the Wind is the same in both cases. It's 12K for theater A, 10K for theater B. What changes is in case one, theater A has the higher willingness to pay for 
oh, sorry, has a lower willingness to pay for getting Gertie's garter, and, and theater B has a higher willingness to pay for it. And in case two, they're reversed. One of the things that we realize here, in, and this is actually the crucial point for when, bu when bundling is useful, here, theater A has the highest willingness to pay for Gone with the Wind, but theater B has the highest willingness to pay for getting Gertie's garter. Their willingness to pay is are negatively correlated, whereas here, theater A is the, high, is the high demander for both films. It'll turn out, actually, bundling is helpful in the top one, in case one. Bundling's not going to be helpful in case two. For bundling to be useful, we need two things. We need for the demands to be negatively correlated, right? So you have one who is the high demander for one good, one who's the high demander for the other good. Not a situation where they're both the high demanders for the same good. And we want the demands to be relatively similar, right? What I mean by this is, let, let's just, uh, let me just pause. Let me just kind of like give you this idea now. We'll come back to that intuition. Suppose this was not 12,000 for Gone with the Wind, but suppose it was 120,000, right? So as I go through the example, check back and keep track of that and on your own and think about how what I'm developing would change if rather than 12,000 for Gone with the Wind, it was 120,000, right? Okay, but let's proceed with the example as written. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my handwritten uh, stuff right here. And I want to talk about First, where we have negatively correlated reservations, this was case one, and this right here is case two, positively correlated reservations. And first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, well, suppose the films were to rent separately. They want to rent separately, so we want to think about, all right, if we're just going to sell these individually, what price do we want to set? The highest price we actually want to set for Gone with the Wind is 10000 if we're selling them separately. And the highest price we want to set for gone for getting Gertie's Garter is 3000 if we're setting, selling separately. Why? Well, suppose we set Gone with the Wind at 12000 Who buys? Only Theater A. So our revenue is going to be 12000 Now suppose we set 4000 for getting for getting Gertie's Garter. Who's going to buy? Only Theater B. So now our revenue is going to be 4000 from GGG for a total of 16000 in revenue. Now let's go back to what I said originally is what we actually want to do. Let's set the price of 10,000 for Gone with the Wind. Who buys? Both, right? Both of them will buy, so we'll earn 20,000 in revenue from Gone with the Wind. What about getting Gertie's Garter? We'll set that for 3,000. Who buys? Both. So we'll get 6,000 in revenue for getting Gertie's Garter. So that's my work up here. I'd say the max price we want to set for Gone with the Wind, it actually turns out to be the lower of these two. And then the max we want to set for getting Gertie's Garter, the lower of these two. So that's going to be to be able to get both A and B to buy. That's my note in parentheses here. We would set 10,000, we'd set 3,000, we would get 13,000 per theater for total revenue of 26,000. This is 26K. And you want to write a whole bunch of zeros? You probably didn't want to stay out a whole bunch of zeros. So this is 12,000, this is 12K, 3K, 4K, 10K. Sorry, I didn't mention that before. This is K for 1,000. All right. Now let's look at what happens if we were to bundle. So the maximum amount we could sell for the bundle, and actually the way to, the way to, the way to do this, and I have not done this on this note, but I need to, I need to come up with what's going to be my maximal willingness to pay for the bundle. So my maximal willingness to pay for the bundle, it's going to be the sum of their two reservation prices, right? So let's see. So the most I could sell the bundle to theater, the, the most I could sell Gone with the Wind and Getting Gertie's Garter 2 for a single price to Theater A would be 15K. And the most that I could sell Gone with the Wind and Getting Gertie's Garter 4 at a single price to Theater B would be 14,000. Well, just following the development we did before, what we want to do is we want to set the price of the bundle at 14,000. What if we set it at 15,000? Who buys? Only Theater A. So our revenues are 15,000. We're assuming there's no costs. What if I set it at a price of 14,000? Now who buys? Both. And now my revenues are going to be 28,000. That's this right here. The maximum amount for the bundle to get both to buy is going to be 14,000 for the bundle. And then my revenue is going to be the 28,000. Right? And that's true of case 1. That's true of case 1 when we have negatively correlated reservations. All right, what about case 2 where we have positively correlated reservations? All I did is I switched rather than being 3k 4k, I put this here. All right, so I'm going to do something similar. Let me actually get this set up so I've, I got my bundle thing set up. 
this is actually not going to be 15,000, right? So if, when, I, when I change these reservations, now it's going to be 12,000 and 6,000. This is going to be 16,000. And maybe you kind of can fork, maybe kind of look ahead and see what the punchline is going to be immediately. Whoops. I'm trying to be so clever, more clever than I actually am. All right. So suppose I were to rent these separately. If I rent these out separately, matter of fact, the same pricing I had above still holds. Right? I still have to set Gone with the Wind at 10000 if I want both to buy. I still have to set Gone, Getting Gertie's Garter at 3000 if I want both to buy. So my revenue per theater is still going to be 13000 I've got two theaters, so my revenues renting separately would be 26000 That's the same as when we have negatively correlated reservations as when we have positively correlated reservations. What about if we bundle? Now the maximal bundle I can sell to get both to buy is 13,000, right? Now I could get 16,000 if I sold if I sold the bundle at a price of 16,000. The problem is that's only I'm only going to get that from theater A. But if I set the price of the bundle at 13,000, now theater A and third, theater B will both buy and my bundle revenue would be 26,000. However, I was better off bundling before when we had negatively correlated reservation prices. Matter of fact, there's actually a gain. If I priced separately, my revenue is 26,000. If I use the bundle, my revenue is 28,000. Now with positively correlated reservations, it doesn't hurt me to use the bundle, but it doesn't help, right? If I rent separately, I still earn 26,000. If I sell the bundle, I still get 26,000. So my comment is the bundling pays when the reservation prices are negatively correlated. All right, so let me skip back to the slides. And I actually, in the slides, I actually talk about um, a couple different things here. So first, one thing we can do is we can think about the graph of reservation prices. Ultimately, as we're solving one of these problems, we ask the question, who buys if we're selling separately? Who buys if we sell as a bundle? And then we follow the development that I just did. Here's a graph of reservation prices. As you're staring at this, you're like, what? what in the world is this? Okay, well, here was a table representation of, re of reservation prices. Here's a graphical representation of reservation prices. Let me tell you what's happening. This R2, this is the reservation price for good two. This R1, that's the reservation price for good one. A, B, and C, are corresponding to different uh, different uh, individuals, individual bundles. And so what, what's happening here is we have reservation prices uh, of 3.5 and 4 for person B. Uh, sorry, 3.25 and 8 for person B. I don't know why I said 4. I have no idea where that came from. That's how my mind works. Here's for person A, we have reservation price of 6 for, for good 2 and 3.25 for good 1. And we have reservation price of 10 and 10 for person C, which is telling us person C is always our high demander. Now let me see if I let me see if I like this a little bit better here. So what's going on is we have our reservation price for good two, we have a reservation price for good one. What this is telling us is consumer A will pay 325 for good one, will pay six for good two. Person B will pay eight dollars for good one. Six dollars, three twenty-five for good two, and person C is our high demander. They'll pay ten for both goods. All right. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to I want to I want to say well we can we have specified where each person's preferences are, but we haven't said anything about what the actual price is. Let's just take some hypothetical prices. Suppose the price these are reservation prices. Suppose the price of good one and two was nine dollars. Who's going to buy? Only person C, right? If we're looking at $9 for good one, only person C values more highly than, values good one more highly than $9. We see that because person C's valuation for good one is 10. What if the price of good two was nine? Who's gonna buy only person C? Because only person C has a reservation price for good two that's beyond $9. What if the price of good one, what if the price of both goods is five? Who buys? Well, good person C is buying no matter what. Well, as long as the price is lower than 10. But we know right off the bat, if the price of both goods is five, good person C is going to buy both. Well, if the price is $5 for good one, person B will buy good one, right? Person B is going to buy good one because their reservation price for one is eight. But I'm saying we're looking at a price of five. So person B will buy good one. Will they buy good two? No, because their reservation price for good two is 325. I said that like my niece. No. All right. 
Uh, and then here is for person A, if the price of good one is five, who's gonna buy? Oh, person, uh, person A and person C, because person A's reservation price for good two is, is six. Will person A buy good, will person A buy good one? No, because person A's reservation price for good one is 325. All right, so now I'm gonna extrapolate that idea more generally. So I say, suppose we have many consumers and products sold separately at some price P1 and P2, we can then divide the customer space into two groups. So what I've got is just as before. Here's my reservation price on the horizontal axis for good two. Here's my reservation price on the vertical axis. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today. So here's my reservation price for good one on, on the horizontal axis. Here's my reservation price for good two on the vertical axis. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, let's take some hypothetical prices. I said, right, this is like the price of five and the price of five that we were just analyzing. Let's just draw a line corresponding to where that price is, bisecting this reservation price uh, space. And what this is telling us is if, if P1 is five, anybody with a higher reservation price is gonna buy good one. If P2 is five, anyone with a higher reservation price than five is gonna buy good two, right? So that's what this is saying. Now, what's course, so I've got my four quadrants, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. What this is telling us is with price of, with price of good one being one, or being P1, and price of good two being P2, the person in quadrant one, that was person C before, is gonna buy both goods. The person in quadrant four is only gonna buy good one. The person in quadrant two is only gonna buy good two. The person in quadrant three isn't gonna buy anything. And if I remember correctly, I have my write-up. There's something wrong in my write-up, I remember, if I remember correctly. So I need to go back and fix this. So let's see, reservation one has reservation prices above the asking prices. Both good one and good two are purchased. Yes, that's correct. Region two, reservation price for good two is above P2, but for good one, it's below P1. So only buy, yep, here's the mistake. So it says only buy one. This is gonna be only buy, uh, only buy good two. That's horrible, 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 horrible. I don't know. Here I thought that was gonna. Here I thought that was gonna work out. Ah, I don't know. That's not so bad. It's not as bad as I thought it could be. Anyway. All right. What about Region C? Region C. The reservation price. Re, region C. Region th Region Three. That's right here. They're not buying anything. Why? Because your reservation price is smaller than P1 because we're to the left of this. And my reservation price of good two is smaller than P2. Yep, that's right. So in region three, we're not gonna buy anything. And in region four, you're gonna, your reservation price for good one is higher than the price of good one, but not for good two. So you buy only good one. That's right. Now, now what I've got on the screen is correct. Okay, so what's the point of this? Like, why do we care? Okay, well, let's think about this for a second. Let's think about what happens when we play, when we bundle. So this is this is corresponding to if we are selling separately at these prices, who's buying? And here's the overarching logic behind bundling. The idea is we can price separately or we can price as a bundle, but there's a trade-off. When we price as a bundle, we might lose some people who would have bought the good individually. Matter of fact, that's the reason for using mixed bundling and for selling standalone products. All right, so let me develop that intuition and talk about who it is that we'd be losing. So the first thing I need to do is I need to show us, the next thing I need to do is I need to show you the graph when we have a bundle. So my question is, what if we sell as a bundle? What happens to the space? Well, my reservation price for good one is still on the horizontal axis. My reservation price for good two is still on the vertical axis. As before, now I don't have quadrants. I just bisect the space where PB is corresponding to the price of the bundle and this is the price of the bundle relative to my reservation price for good one. This is the price of the bundle on my reservation price for good two access. If my, if my, think about where we plotted those points. Think about where person C was gonna be. Let, I mean, let's just go back for a second. Person C was way out here. So think about person C is like way out here. Person C is gonna buy both goods. Matter of fact, they were gonna buy both goods if priced separately and they're for sure gonna buy the bundle. What about the person, and then if you're on this side, you're not buying at all. Um, all right, so let me, I should say something about here. What's happening is the consumers are comparing the sum of the reservation prices, R1 plus R2, to the price of the bundle, PB. They're gonna buy if R1 plus R2 is greater or equal to the price of the bundle. 
Now, as I wrote this out, this sounds kind of scary. Let's just talk about this conceptually. You're going to buy the bundle if the sum of your reservation prices exceeds the price of the bundle, right? You're going to buy the bundle if you pay more individually for the two goods than you would for the bundle, right? So that's what this is doing. This is saying my reservation price for good one plus my reservation price for good two. If that's bigger than the bundle price, then I buy the bundle. Well, this is just a line corresponds to actually this equation right here, the slope of this line. So what I did is I just solved this inequality for R2. That's this right here. With equality, it's specifically this line. All right, so divide. this is the dividing line. It's specifically this right here. That's all that is. Now my question or my observation, some people in region two might have bought if we had priced separately. Some people who are no longer buying might have bought if we priced, if we priced separately. These were lost to the firm if we bundled. So the firm must check to see if it is indeed the case that bundling is superior. Think about this. Like, look at this downward sloping line and think about how that might overlay across these quadrants. This is when we're pricing separately. Now imagine, I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can do that. Imagine, that here's my bundle line. I don't know if I can change. It'd be awesome if I could change that color. Awesome. It'd be awesome. Er. If I can make that thick. Awesomer. All right, so here's my line for my bundle. Now think about what's going to happen. Think about what's going to happen. If this is where my bundle price is going to be, right? If this is, you know, we're doing this right here. Think of PB. If this is where my bundle price is going to be, who would have previously only bought good two are buying the bundle. Everybody right here who previously would have only bought good one are buying the bundle. But we're losing these people. These people right here would have bought good two, not good one. They're not buying the bundle and they're not buying anything. These people right here, they would have bought good one. They're not buying the bundle. Therefore, they're not getting good one or good two. So we've lost these people and these people. We've gained these people are paying more because they're buying both goods via the bundle, right? So that's kind of the trade-off of bundling. You could think about where this would lie for bundling to be a good idea, right? I think that's kind of cool. So that's the that's the motivation. Now let's go back to the let's go back to my revenue, uh, my previous um, my movie revenue example. So if we were to do this, remember my reservation price for good two, uh, it was four thousand and three thousand for the two theaters respectively. It was 10,000 and 12,000 for the two theaters respectively. My price of my bundle, my revenue maximizing price of my bundle is 14,000, that's this right here. All right, so theater B was willing to pay 10,000 for Gone with the Wind, 4,000 for getting Gertie's Garter. They're right here, they're literally on the line where my bundle is. How do we know that? Because look, 10,000 plus 4,000 gave me the 14,000. Of course they're on that line. They're the one we built the bundle from. What about person, or what about theater A? They were willing to pay 12,000 for Gone with the Wind, 3,000 for getting Gertie's Garter, they're lying in region one. They buy the bundle. Actually, we actually get both to buy the bundle by construction. So here is just some work calculating and indeed that I've justified where these plot, where, where I've plotted these points. I don't know. You can take a second to look at it. I think that's useful. I don't know. You'll probably want to stop the video. It's just a, just a little bit of algebra. And um, the big the big idea is like, this is the graphical depiction of the fact that, hey, when we sell the bundle, we're we, we're going to have both theater A and theater B buy, theater B buy construction, because the bundle price was based off of theater B's willingness to pay because they are the they are the ones with the lowest willingness to pay for the bundle. What's happening here? Demands are negatively correlated, so bundling pays. All right, whoops. Uh, my comment. The profitability of bundling depends on how correlated people's tastes are for the two goods. So here's a graphical, graphical example. Negatively correlated reservation prices make sense to bundle, obviously, because if we do this, now we can drop in, we can drop in our bundle line, right? So this would be like my PB corresponding to where the bundle is, and maybe we'll be able to, you know, if we have negatively correlated price, <laughs> the vent, that's, I didn't know that was gonna do that. It shows what I know. Anyway, so if we had the bundle price, this right here, we'd lose them all. This right here, we get some of them. This right here, we get them all buying the bundle. Negatively correlated reservation prices are important for bundling to pay. You can, you can see, I wonder if that'll stay. No, it won't. Shoot. All right, let me take this off. What if you have positively correlated reservation prices? Now, if we have the bundle, we'll gain all these people. We'll lose all these people. But wait a second. Those are exactly the people we would have had pricing separately, right? Think about the grid or think about the, think about the quadrants we'd have, right? 
if you have positively correlated reservation prices, bundling's not going to help. Exactly the people who would have bought individually are buying the bundle, right? You'd have this picture kind of. That's the problem with positively correlated reservation prices. That's why bundling is not helpful because you're not getting additional sales. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to conclude the video right here. I'm going to link up some examples that I've done. I actually didn't have them ready to go here, but I'll link them up in the description for the video. Hope you liked the video. I uh, hope you're staying healthy, happy. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you later.